Hello and welcome to today's video. I have the awesome privilege of interviewing Coach Casey, who happens to be my beautiful wife. Uh, <laughs> for those of you that are watching this for the first time, uh, Coach Casey does intimacy and relationship coaching uh, and specifically focuses on women to help them be their best self, uh, live their best life, have more intimacy and, and a better relationship with their spouse. So Casey, thank you for doing this interview with me today. Yeah. Thanks so much for, you know, making this happen. I appreciate yeah. it. A lot. So um, one of the questions that I get a lot in my community is they say stuff like, Hey, Steven, uh, do you think that we're going to see more babies coming out of the lockdown or more divorces? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I hate to, I hate to even think that it could be more divorces, but as you work with women all across the country and, and even here uh, with local clientele that you get to meet with, what would you say is like the, the number one thing that you end up talking with your clients about when it comes to their relationships? So, you know, that's a really great question. And um, at first, I think we all thought that we would have a whole slew of quarantine babies, like you said, and that it would be the whole, like the next baby boomer generation of this generation. And it turns out that it's kind of the opposite, that people are, people are really struggling. And um, I think that people are struggling with losing their sense of self. People have really, you know, define themselves by their work, define themselves by, um, and honestly, and I know how this is, um, as a mom that works, I kind of have enjoyed the time that my kids were at school. And because I could develop myself and my business and, um, you know, accomplish something. And so I think a lot of people have lost that. And that puts a lot of pressure on a relationship. It puts a lot of pressure on your marriage. And so, um, and some people are, are faring that pretty well. And those people usually don't have children. <laughs> um, and if they do have children and they're faring it well, it's because they, you know, they've done some hard work previous to this pandemic to be able to um, withstand that kind of pressure. Yeah. So I think that what people, when they're coming to me right now, a lot of women are really struggling with um, how they've defined themselves. And so that's what I really try to help women do. Um, and I actually have um, coached men here and there. I focus mainly on women because it's what I know. Um, but, and, and couples here and there will ask for my help as well. But um, for the most part, I think people are trying to um, redefine themselves in a way that, um, you know, makes sense during this time. So, yeah. and I think that's, you know, that's the, the big, the big part I think is defining yourself. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, these crazy lockdowns have made people define themselves differently than they normally would. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you and I talk about this a lot when it comes to people that you're coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, you had said to me one time that you thought the problem would be mostly men in the relationship, but where you find your coaching going is actually just setting the man aside and right. helping your client become her best self. Right. So uh, maybe talk a little bit about that. And, and for the women that are watching this interview, what are some ways or ideas that they can become their best self, which then brings their best self to their relationship? Right. So um, I really have found that in order to become your best self, it's taking ownership of what you're experiencing. And so much of what we have experienced this last year has been out of our control. So I think it's um, made people feel like, you know, if their, if their relationship wasn't as, where it wanted to, where they wanted it to be, at least they had their career or at least they had their free time. And so I think it just makes people feel like it's just the, the straw that broke the camel's back. And so um, what I try to do is help women look at that and take ownership of what it is that they are contributing. And it's a really hard um, thing to confront as we go through this process of self-discovery 
And um, it's not easy. It's, it's painful. It takes humility and maturity, which um, is developed in this process. And a lot of people don't come with it. So I read something yesterday that really struck me. And it was that um, what narcissism is, and we hear this term now, I mean, I think a lot of personality disorders are now being thrown around like, oh, is he a narcissist? Or, oh, they have a personality disorder. And really what um, narcissism is, is a lack of maturity and a lack of development. You don't just come uh, to this world as a narcissist for the most part. I'm sure there's exceptions to that. But um, many times I've, I've actually had quite a few people in the community, um, in my coach Casey community on YouTube, reach out to me and say, I'm married to a narcissist. Do you have any advice for me? And that advice that I would have is, um, you know, one, you can't change your partner, as hard, you know, try as we might. Um, we can't wish them into a better position or manipulate them. I mean, you can manipulate them, but it doesn't help your relationship. All you can do is develop yourself. And what that does is put pressure on your relationship to change. And that's really a painful process. And it takes the maturity that I was talking about. So coming back to that narcissism piece, um, to, to kind of talk about this, because I've had clients say, oh, I'm married to a narcissist. And really what they were saying is we're both emotionally immature and we both expect the other person to be the one to, that changes in order to make the relationship change. So what I try to do is help women realize that they have a lot more power in the relationship than they think they do. Because if they were to say, I'm going to stop telling my husband that if he would just change, then everything would change for us and tell them that they have the capacity for growth and change. And that um, as they stop trying to um, change their spouse and genuinely work on themselves, the relationship a lot of times will fall into place. I know that for you and I, that has been, um, that's been true. I felt like, and I never felt like you were like, uh, that you needed to change and then my life would improve. I just um, was underdeveloped in a lot of ways when we first got married. And I expected that you would carry, you, your, your being a developed person would carry both of us. And the truth is, is I, was, I didn't uh, discover my own happiness until I developed myself. Yeah. And then our relationship just exploded. And I feel like we started out with a great relationship, but it wasn't until I figured out that I was in control of myself and yeah. my feelings and yeah. that it was my job to manage those things and not yours, that our relationship really blossomed. Yeah, I see that a lot. Uh, I'm just going to give the male perspective is okay. I see with a lot of my male friends that are married, uh, some of them the same amount of time as us or longer or shorter, right? But either way is um, a lot of men are somewhat underdeveloped because they're expected to, you know, be a man, go be a provider, be a great dad, be a great husband. And uh, like the only time that they have outlet is, oh, am I going to go have a, a drink with the boys or go play cards or, or something like that? So they, they, end up depending too heavily on their wife to be their best friend or to help them grow or to make up for their shortcomings. And one thing that uh, you and I both had to learn in being married for over 15 years now is uh, I have to learn to stand on my own and be strong. And I have to let you learn to stand on your own and be strong. And then the two of us are strong for each other or when I'm feeling weak, you're strong and that strengthens me and, and vice versa. Same thing, you know, with the example to our children is they see us both be strong and, and independent, but, but work together. But do, do you see that when you're doing coaching where uh, one spouse or both spouses are maybe not standing in their own strength, they're relying on the other person to be strong for them and that kind of hurts the relationship. Right. Yes. And, you know, I think we um, are kidding ourselves if we think that both people are always going to be able to stand strong in themselves. But um, I think it's appropriate to expect 
that sometimes you're the strong one and that your spouse depends on you. And sometimes it's flipped. But that, that being said, like you just have to expect that in marriage. And there's going to be times where you're both lacking and you're both grasping. That being said, if you are not actively pursuing becoming a more solid, more grounded person, it will pressure your marriage in an unfair way, in a way that doesn't produce growth. It produces resentment and anger and fear. And those three things are terrible for a marriage. There's um, John, John Gottman has, I love John Gottman's work and I probably won't be able to remember all of the, um, they have the four horsemen of the apocalypse of marriage and it's criticism and um, contempt are the two, the two worst things. We all criticize our spouses, but when we find ourselves overly critical and constantly trying to pressure the other person to grow or pressure the other person to change, it creates contempt and contempt on a regular basis is death to a marriage or a relationship. And that can, that's actually true of any relationship, not just marriage, <clears throat> but it's especially true of marriage. So when you find yourself, um, when resentments get, keep piling on and um, you know, none of us are perfect, we're gonna feel resentful sometimes. But if we're finding ourselves being resentful a lot, this is where contempt is born. And contempt for your spouse is something that you have to root out and eliminate. Yeah, I, I remember saying to one of my friends, uh, you know, he was complaining about his wife. And I said, um, you know, when, when was the last time you looked at your wife and just internally said, wow, here's another human just struggling through life's journey mm -hmm. instead of expecting them to measure up to the ideal wife or the, the, the photoshopped wife in a magazine or, or something like that, or that they never make mistakes or that they, you know, live exactly within your expectations. They're an individual person and they're at the same time, they're also a human going through a life journey just like you. And I, I think that sometimes we, we forget that our significant other is a, a different brain, a different intake filter, a different life experience. Uh, and, and yet they're still going through this life just like you, but they interpret the data a little bit different. And so I think that's why communication is mm -hmm. so important. You and I do not see eye to eye on everything, but I think that that strengthens our marriage by being okay with that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's a really important distinction that um, when we don't have that maturity piece that we talked about earlier, we tend to blame the other partner for all of our shortcomings or problems. And um, something that I have seen um, that I have seen this in our marriage, something I've seen a lot with my friends' marriages and something that I see with my clients is that this, this piece of collusion where we collude with each other to not develop. So for example, there was a time where um, I feel like I was spending too much time on my phone and I would feel this little like nudge to be like, hey, get off your phone and connect. And then I'd look over and you're on your phone and I'm, and then I'm like, eh, oh, well, he's on his phone. Let's just like, we'll just waste what's 10 more minutes of wasting, you know, just fully just letting that time pass by while I'm doing this, you know? And, um, I think that is a really, um, I think a lot of people do this and not just with their phones, but with a lot of really unhealthy habits that we collude with each other. That's where collusion begins, where you both kind of know you're doing something you shouldn't be doing and you see the other person there and they're kind of quietly going in that direction too. And you just don't change. You don't do the thing you know that would actually um, help you, you know, grow. And, you know, you end up wasting another day on your phone because 
you don't want to be the one to say, Hey, do you think maybe we should read a book or, Hey, let me put down my phone and let's look into each other's eyes. And I think that that is really, really what marriages are needing right now. And not just with their phones, but stop colluding with each other. Yeah. Like if I don't have to develop, neither do you. And if you don't have to develop, neither do I. And that's where marriages fall apart. So because- maybe, maybe we, you know, set down the collusion and pick up the collaboration, right? Yes. Like I, re- yeah. I remember when you and I both were like, you know what? Uh, I, I think we are independently on our phones too much. Right. And so we, we set those down. We didn't come up with like strong rules or, or anything, but it was like, Hey, listen, at nighttime, if we're going to be on our phone, like let's uh, listen to a podcast together that we developed together. And then it gave us a ton to talk about, right? Yes. Whether mm-hmm. it was, um, you know, listening to a, a relationship, uh, you know, talk or something or something to do with, you know, the Bible or, you um, you know, whatever it could be, you know, Um, I I think by not colluding, but collabing, doing things together. I love that. (laughs) I think that's, yeah, my next blog post is colluding versus collabing. I think that's a really, really great um, thing because if you, if you're constantly saying you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that, and you don't replace it with something that is as satisfying, even if it is harder to do, Putting down your phone now is hard to do. They are literal. There are literally people whose job it is to help you figure out how to stay on this more. Yeah. That's they, they have addiction experts to say, how do we keep them on this social media platform longer? You know, yeah. and they, and they, and it works. So we uh, are the, we're being played. And so if we could just disconnect from that and then re- re-engage with the things that are appropriate and it's hard to do and i know i have been in the depths of despair i have felt depression i know that when you are feeling in that darkness closing in the last thing you want to do is go for a walk or connect with somebody you feel and know needs your connection those are really difficult things to do, but they are so satisfying. Yeah. So satisfying. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I like about collaboration versus collusion is when you are colluding in the example you gave, like I'm inputting stuff to my brain and you're inputting stuff to your brain and they're not the same. So then we sit down and we're like, I don't know what to talk about because I, I've been learning about this stuff that I don't have time to explain to you. And you've been learning about stuff that I don't have time to be, have it explained to me. But if we listen to the same thing, then all of a sudden uh, at hours of relationship discussion can open yeah. up, you know, yeah. whether it's talking about the election or whether it's talking about our marriage or, um, mm-hmm. you know, our childhood, you and I talk about our childhoods a lot, uh, which mm-hmm. I have uh, actually felt a lot of healing by talking about different things, but it gives our brains something in common to connect and communicate over. Um, I know that we're running out of time. I want to be uh, conscious of your time. I know you're homeschooling, um, but uh, if you could give one bit of advice to the women that are, are watching this, what is one thing uh, that they could do to strengthen themselves or their confidence that would bring more to their relationship? It's a great question. You know, um, I think the theme of my coaching practice is the answer lies within you already. The, The point is to clear away everything else and remember that we are divine and we have forgotten that. And, um, that right now sitting where you are, you are worthy and you have value. And there's always room for improvement. And anytime you try to take that notion and have it as an excuse to stop growing or progressing, that's, that's a lie as well. But that being said, if you have forgotten that you are divine, then I would, that's, I couldn't impart anything else than to remind my clients, my friends, people in the community that they have value and it exists 
because they are breathing and that um, anytime we act outside of that value and that worth, that's the lie. Yeah. So we need to clear away the clutter, clear away the mental gymnastics that we do every single day to try to prove that we're worthy. It's already there. The worth is already there. So all of these things we do to try to prove that we're worthy of, of validation, of love, of, of, of anything. And especially right now where people are struggling and have lost so much already this year um, to remember that that inherent worth just exists and you don't have to work and try so hard. Yeah, I, I think that would be my advice. Dust off your worth, girl, because you already got it, you know? Yeah, yeah it's like, just exactly. It yeah. yeah, it's like, hey, I don't have to have the validation of somebody who, for whatever reason, I perceive that I, I want that from. You know, anytime you feel that creep in, just shake it off. Like, sometimes I have to shake it off when I'm, especially because right now I'm trying to build up my, um, Instagram so that I can be somebody who put, who puts light on somewhere that I have felt darkness exists. And there, there's this whole world of good people trying to do good on there. And I want to be one of them. I have to physically shake sometimes and say, Nope, I'm not, I don't need the validation of more likes or more, more followers or subscribers to prove anything. I just want to put goodness out there and um, pray that goodness is coming back to me, but I don't expect it. I just am, you know, happily surprised when it happens. And so I think if more of us would, would do that and I'm not perfect at it, there's still times that I am hard on myself or down on myself or think if X, Y, Z were changed, then I would be happier. And I just have to stop that thought in its tracks. Yeah. And it, one of my favorite quotes is to, when you have a negative thought about yourself, you send that back to hell where it came from. <laughs> and I love that quote. And um, I think it, it, that's, that's something that I really am trying to practice is stopping my negative thoughts. And the moment they happen, having compassion of why it happened and then casting it out. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for imparting wisdom. I hope that the, those that are watching this gain value. Let us know in the comments, what other questions do you have that Coach Casey and I could answer about personal development, being your best self, your relationship, your marriage. Uh, we, we want to do this on a more regular basis. Absolutely. And uh, if nothing else, I hope that you will dust off your worth, remember who you are, and remember that you are amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Casey, for being on. You guys, make sure to go subscribe to Coach Casey. She puts out a video uh, at least once uh, a, a week uh, when her kids are not uh, taking up too much. The goal is once a week, but it's happening about once every other week. But hey, we're making it happen anyway. Yeah, great. Well, hey, thank you again for being on and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, hon. <laughs>